Okay, in question number seven, we're doing the same type of thing to a rational function. Um, in this rational function, we have an x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 3. Now, this time I gave you a rational function that is not factorable. There are any factors of 1 that will give you a 4, so you won't be able to factor it. But what we can do is we can start working on the domain and our other information. So the domain would be all real numbers that we can use except for what would be division by 0. So we want to make sure that we do not use a positive 3 halves because a positive 3 halves would be division by 0. So we want to include in our domain negative infinity to 3 halves union that with 3 halves all the way to positive infinity. The vertical asymptote mirrors that domain. Um, it's just that we want to write the equation of a vertical line, and the equation of that vertical line is x equals 3 halves. The horizontal asymptote. This time there isn't a horizontal asymptote, and the reason that is is because our top degree is a degree 2, and our bottom degree is degree 1. And anytime this top was bigger by 1, it'll be an oblique asymptote. So what I can do is I can cross off the horizontal asymptote, there won't be one, and we will go find the oblique asymptote. So that's what we're going to do now. In order to do that, I've recommended using long division, x squared minus 4x plus 1. And we're going to divide that by 2x minus 3. So now when I divide, I want to fi figure out what is the number I multiply 2x by to get a 2x squared. So what do I take 2x times, I'll just put in a different variable here, um, a, to get just an x squared. So I want to find what the value of a is. So that means in order to isolate a, I divide both sides by 2x. And that means I want to multiply by 1 half x. Because there will be 1 x left up there. So 1 half x. So if I multiply by 1 half x, I should be able to get an x squared. And half of a 2 is 1. And x times x is x squared. Now I take half of a negative 3, which is negative 3, halves x. As I said, rather than subtract, we draw the line, change the signs, and add. So we're really adding the opposites here. And now when we add, I have a negative 4 over 1 plus 3 halves. To get a common denominator, or make it a 2, makes it a negative 8. That makes it a negative 5 halves. So what I end up with, after I subtract, is a negative 5 halves x. Bring down your next number is plus 1. Now what do I multiply 2x by? And this is my mindset of what I think about. I need to be able to take this 2x and end up with a negative 5 halves x. So what I multiply 2x by, again I use a, to get a negative 5 halves x, I guess. And that's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to divide by 2x. Well, rather than dividing by 2x, I'm going to multiply by 1 over 2x. That will help me on the other side. So these are going to reduce. And a is going to equal, I got a negative 5 halves x. We're going to take that times um, 1 over 2x. So what we'll end up with, so we multiply straight across, it'll be a negative 5. The 2 times 2 is 4. And this is an x over 1 times a 1 over x, so they'll be reduced. So what I want to multiply by is a negative 5 fourths. So if I take a negative 5 fourths times 2x, I'm going to validate and verify that for you. If I actually take this negative 5 fourths and I take it times 2x, that's going to give me a negative 5 halves x, which is exactly what we want. So we want a negative 5 halves x. Then we take a negative 5 halves times a negative 3, which would be a positive, And that will be a 15 fourths. Now we draw the line, change the signs. And I'm going to stop here because there are no other numbers that we bring down. And if you remember, we disregard what this remainder is anyway. So in essence, I've already found what I'm looking for. And that is the oblique asymptote, which is... 1 half x plus, check that, minus 5 fourths. Now the x-intercepts are a little bit more interesting in this problem because they are the values that you put in that gives you an output of 0. And the only way that we can get a rational equation to equal 0 is when the numerator is equal to 0. So the top of our fraction has to be 0 in order for the fraction to equal 0. So that's what we're looking for. What are the inputs that will create an output of 0? So x squared minus 4x plus 1 
didn't factor, wasn't going to factor, so that means we have to rely on our quadratic formula. So you take the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of negative 4 square root, which is 16, minus 4 times 1 times a 1, which is just minus 4, all over each over 2 a, and a is 1, so it's all over 2, so it's really 2 plus or minus. This is the square root of 12 divided by 2. The square root of 12 is, or can be written as, the square root of 4 times 3, which is 2 times the square root of 3 all over 2, which will reduce to 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, these are the locations of your x-intercept. So those are the inputs. So the x-intercepts I'm going to record here are 2 plus or minus the square root of 3 comma 0. There's 2 and 1 there. Make sure I copied those numbers down right. I did. And then the y-intercepts are when we place a 0 in for the x's. So if I place a 0 in for the x's, I just have a, a positive 1 divided by a negative 3. So my y-intercept is the order pair 0. When I put in a 0, we got a negative 1 third back. So that concludes our study of rational equations along with all of their possible uh, domains, asymptotes, holes. And there wasn't a hole in that one. I probably could cross it out, but there are no factors that were the same.